The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... There are parts of California that haven't changed in centuries. Along the coastline, the waves of the Pacific beat on the shores just as they did during the gold rush. Mansions built in the 1800s stand ghost-like and untenanted. One of them, with ten rooms, forty windows, has been empty for most of thirty years. Until today. They found Mr. Slade Brown in front of the fireplace. Dead. And Mr. James Burns holding a gun. So he was arrested and found guilty of murder. But James Burns said he didn't remember anything about the shooting. That's what he said. But the jury didn't believe him. Suppose he didn't do it after all. That would be a terrible shame. He would have gone to prison for 30 years for nothing. mystery drama, The Secret of Crow's Nest, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Gerald Keene and stars Mandel Kramer and Carol Titel. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Why has this house withstood the bulldozer and the developers? One reason, no one thinks it's for sale. Another, there is no way to build a clutch of cottages or ranch houses off a road that winds like a corkscrew up a mountainside. So there it stands. Crow's Nest, it's called. A wooden mansion of many secrets. Shutters shut, doors locked. The iron gates below the house rusted as they stand open. What happened here 30 years ago? It looks like whoever left that mountain lodge left in an awful hurry. But now... A visitor. Hello? Hello? Anybody home? Yes. The real estate office in Trudeau said it was all right to have a look around. What for? I've got a letter from him, uh, Williamson. Here you see, permit bearer to... Uh, they told me this house could be viewed any day between noon and six o'clock. I'm afraid it's awfully close to six, but I had a flat tire on my way up the mountain, so I had to leave my car and walk. You, uh, you aiming to live here? Oh, I don't know. I'd, uh, like to have a look around first. Crow's Nest is not for sale. Sports update from WBBM. The unanimous winner tonight, Muhammad Ali, the winner and new world heavyweight champion. And Williamson's gave me to understand that it might be. Well, all right then. It's no use you standing out there. Come on inside. Uh, if you wait a minute here in the hall, I'll I'll go get some candles. Why, they shut off the electricity? Oh, we never had any electricity. When Mr. and Mrs. Burns lived here, they kept to the old ways, you know, coal stoves, wood in the fireplace, candles, kerosene lights. It it was the way they liked it. Mm -hmm. I guess you're the housekeeper, the caretaker here. Well, shall we say I do take care of the place. I'm not much on titles. No, neither am I. Now, let's see, the main hall is through there, and beyond that, the trophy room. Hey, mister, have you been here before? Why do you ask? Well, not many people know about the trophy room, or where it was. I keep the kitchen here pretty much in order. I heat up a meal when I'm cleaning. The main hall is through that door. It's where the Burnses used to eat in front of the fire in wintertime. It's an informal place, you might say. I suppose you noticed those big logs that make up the timbered walls. Oh, yes. Very handsome. What else can you tell me about Crow's Nest? Well, it was built by Mrs. Burns' great-grandfather. They say he made his money in the gold rush up at Sutter's Mill. Four generations lived here. <laughs> I'm real surprised the real estate people said that Crow's Nest was for sale. Now, you see, off the main hall are the bedrooms... Three of them on this side and one over on the other. 
So, uh, <laughs> so you're thinking of buying, huh? No, I'm thinking of having a look around. Well, we don't get many people up this way. Do you live here? No. No, I live down at the bottom of the mountain. In Trudeau. I come up here to take care of things. Do you know the town? Trudeau. Came through it on my way up. Tell me, how long has the lodge been unoccupied? Oh, a long time. It's changed hands a few times in 30 years, but it's in good shape. See, this place needs a, a, a special kind of owner. You know, people who like the mountain. People who, people who don't need other people too much. Mm-hmm. Is that what the Burnses were like? How did you know their name? You told me. I did? Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> yes, I, I, I guess I did. They say this place is haunted. Is that so? People are always talking. This is, um, I'm sorry, I didn't get your name. Miss Mantle. Miss Mantle. I'm asking about the house because I want to know. I'm not making idle gossip. I appreciate that. And if Williamson told you to come and have a look around, I'll do what I can to help. It's only, well... What? Well, if I say what I think, perhaps no one will want the place. Let me be the judge of that, Miss Mantle. Unless your idea is to scare people away. I don't have to. There are funny noises, but uh, old houses always make noises. Well, depends what they are. People moving around, voices. Oh, it's most probably in people's imaginations. Yours too? What do you hear? Well, when the wind blows down that main chimney, it makes quite a draft. Sometimes I'm cleaning in one of the rooms and it makes real... Loud noises. Do you hear words? Well, if I were a nervous person, I guess I could think so. Who pays you, Miss Mantle? Look, I'm not here to talk about me. Oh, sounds like one of our mountain storms coming up. Well, I'd better make sure everything's shut tight. That wind down the chimney. I'd be upstairs and... See, I, I'd hear a loud bang. A, a loose door getting caught by the draft. A bang? From any particular place? Oh, the trophy room. That door is awful loose. A bang? Like a shot being fired? What did you say? I said a bang like a shot being fired. How did you know? Maybe. Has anyone else ever heard the sound of a shot in this house? Maybe. People hear all kinds of things and they say all kinds of things. And when there's been a tragedy in the house, well, you know what people are like. A tragedy, yes. Have you ever seen anything out of the ordinary, Miss Mantle? No. No, never. I've heard things, but I say to myself, you're, you're hearing things. And if I didn't tell myself I was hearing things, why, well, a, a body could go crazy. It happens that often? When it's dark. So it's mostly in the wintertime. When it gets dark early, I, uh, I usually try to get down the mountain while it's still light, but sometimes you can't. But my my jeep takes me most anywhere. Uh, there's a storm coming up now. I'd like to talk to you a little more. Come along to the trophy room. I'll start up a fire. Is there wood? No, I, I'd rather not go in there. Why not? A great deal more I want to know. No, not in there. Please, not, not me. That's where it happened. In the trophy room. You could light a fire in the main hall. Good fireplace there. And if you wouldn't mind, I'd prefer it. Well, it's burning nicely. You did that like an expert. Ah, these old fireplaces. They knew how to build them in those days. Sit a little closer, Miss Mantle. Oh, thank you, no... I'm all right where I am. Ah, I did as you asked. I lit a fire in the main hall. So tell me what you know about Crow's Nest. Well, 30 years ago, Mr. and Mrs. Burns, that's uh, Hayward James Burns, and his wife lived here. He'd inherited the lodge from his father. Oh, goes back generations. They loved this place. They'd go camping, backpacking, hunting. What about Slade Brown? How did you know that name? Tell me what you know about him. He was a guest here. One day, Mr. Burns went out hunting and accidentally injured his toe, so he had to stay indoors for a while. But Mrs. Burns and Mr. Slade would go out every day together. 
Mr. Burns didn't want his wife to stay cooped up here just because of his foot. You seem to know the story pretty well. well you couldn't help knowing because of what happened. One day, they found Mr. Slade Brown dead on the floor of the trophy room. And Mr. Burns, he was holding the rifle. He didn't remember anything, he said. But they put him in prison for 30 years. If he's still alive, he must be out by now. Do people around here still think Mr. Burns killed his friend? What else can they think? But he said he didn't remember anything, that he didn't do it. Oh, it was him. He had to have done it. His lawyer tried to say he was insane or blacked out or something. But the jury didn't believe that. You see, there was talk about Mrs. Burns and this Slade Brown. They must have figured it could have been jealousy. You think Jim Burns did it too, don't you, Miss Mantle? Yes. Yes, I do. It was sad. James Burns never knew how sad it was. Sad? Maybe there wasn't anything going on between Mrs. Burns and Slade Brown. But Mr. Burns must have thought there was. That's why I said it was sad. So you too believe Jim Burns killed Slade? It was his rifle. The bullet came from it. One bullet. And there was no one else in the house but Mrs. Burns. Miss Mantle, I'm going to tell you something. I went to school with Jim Burns. He wouldn't kill anyone. All sure he liked game hunting and fishing and target practice and all the outdoor things. But kill a human being? Never. I knew him as well as my right hand. If he said he didn't remember firing that gun, he didn't. And as for being jealous of Slade Brown, it wasn't possible. Jim was crazy about his wife, and she loved him. Five years they'd been married, and they shared Crow's Nest. It was their heaven on earth, this old lodge. I'm sorry, Miss Mantle. I, I, I didn't mean to scare you. I, I knew all about this place. But I wanted to know what you knew. Here's Jim Burns dying by inches in jail for 30 years for something he didn't do. How else could it have happened? I wish I knew. What do you want? What are you going to do? I want to stay on here tonight. No. No, that's not possible. I couldn't agree to that. Even if you stayed in the house? Oh, not me. Never. So, if you don't mind, I'll be locking up and start back. The weather's pretty nasty out there. Oh, don't worry. My Jeep can make it in any weather. But I haven't looked the whole place over yet. Well, you arrived here too late. Surely I had to walk up half the mountain. As long as I'm here, what difference does it make Look, to you? Look, uh, come back the day after tomorrow. That's when I'm at Crow's Nest again. Uh, if you don't mind, Miss Mantle, I think I'll stay. I have my reasons. No, you don't. I'm going to have to insist you go. I'm locking up. But I hardly spent any time here at all. I am leaving here now, and so are you. All right. Hadn't I better put out the fire? Oh, yes. You're a strange man. Why do you say that? The way you suddenly gave up. All right, you said. I'll go. I can wait. I've waited this long. I can give you a ride down the mountain back to Trudeau. Tell me, Miss Mantle. What would you have done if I had absolutely refused to leave? I would have told the police in the morning. Uh, what, that I spent the night here, that I was trespassing? No. Because you are James Burns. And I think the police would like to know where you are. How did you know? I guessed. Are you James Burns? Yes. For 30 years, a man serves out his prison term for a crime he has no recollection of committing. Now he has returned to where it happened, to where he lived happily with his wife, to where his best friend was killed. It's unusual for Mystery Theater to bring you the end of the story before the beginning, threads woven into a design of death. But what we hope we shall unravel is the how and the why. I'll be back shortly with Act Two. Finer voices than mine have told a similar tale. It's 300 years old, and the plot 
is almost identical. Said Christopher Marlowe, to suffer at the hands of fate, to suffer punishment unjustly, oh, to outlive that memory, those spent tears, those unhealed wounds, and turn back time to the innocence of a happier day. Now, to the present. From Marlowe to Mystery Theater, to a woman who guards a haunted house, and a man who has served his time. Oh, wouldn't you know it? Well, keep trying. Oh, no. Better not. It's probably flooded. Okay, we'll wait. Weren't coming down so hard, we could walk. Huh, would you? It's five miles. Oh, I often have. Come back. Should we go back inside? I don't think we have any choice. Well, I got the fire started again. Where will you sleep, Miss Mantle? In the kitchen. I can light the stove. It'll be warm enough. Mr. Burns, why did you come back to Crow's Nest pretending you wanted to buy this place? I'm here to find out something. What happened there in that trophy room 30 years ago is known only to the Lord himself. Slade is dead. My memory's dead. I've been waiting a long time to find out. Do you think the walls will speak to you? I suppose it depends on who was haunting this place. I think you're crazy. A lot of people have said that. Did you know me 30 years ago? I didn't recognize you today, if that's what you mean. No, because of this beard. This big, white, bushy beard I grew in jail. No, no, not only that. Your eyes are different. Even your voice isn't the same. A man of 55 is not much like a boy of 25. Well, when you've lived longer in a cell than in a house, you change a great deal. But there's always something, though. Some little thing. Back then... You did know me. Yes. Did I know you? I don't think you did. <laughs> Not very well. Incredible. I guess you saw me around here in Trudeau, maybe? I did. There and other places. I'm sorry to say that I don't recall you. White hair changes a woman, too. All right. Good night, then. I'll take this candle. You take the other one. I'm going into the trophy room. No, please don't. Why? Why do you care? I, I wish you wouldn't go in there. I must. Don't you understand? No, there, there's wickedness in there. This was my house. And that room is my only way to find out. Not at night. Can't you wait till it's daylight? Miss Mantle, why do you care what room I go to? Good night. Uh, let me go in with you for a moment to see if there's a proper place for you to sleep. Most of the furniture was taken away years ago. Look at that. It hasn't changed much. Just as I remember it. Can't believe that no one's been in here in all these years. It's so clean. Miss Mantle, you, you never came in here? I used to. Sometimes. In the middle of the day. But not in the last few years. I'm not as strong as I was. I tell you, it's a miracle. Look here, the glass on the gun case is just as it was. Not a crack in it. A lot of beautiful historic rifles used to stand in there. Are you going to stay in here the whole night? I don't know for how long, Miss Mackey. Well, where will you sleep? There's not a stick of furniture. Well, I'll start this fire. Lie down on the hearth. And the mantelpiece, huh? how smooth it is. And the paneling. Uh, where is it now? Where, where is that? But there's nothing on the mantelpiece, I'm afraid, but dust. Ah, oh, yes, there is. It's still there. What is? On this wood panel over the center of the fireplace. What did you find? A bullet hole. It's still here. That bullet hole. Was that made by the shot that... That killed Slade? I believe it was. Good night, Miss Mantle. You are absolutely certain you wish to remain in this room? The answer is definitely yes. Now, good night. I'll see you in the morning. Oh, and Miss Mantle, should you hear any sounds or voices in the night, it will only be me. You're going to talk to yourself? And to whatever spirits these four walls contain. You should be able to get a good night's rest. The storm is passing over. So remember, if you hear anyone talking, it's most likely me. Good night. 
I have come back, Slade. Slade, do you hear me? I, Hayward James Burns. I'm standing in exactly the same spot where I stood 30 years ago. Why did you die, Slade? Who shot you? You must have the answer. Do you remember Jeff Conroy? He was at school with us. Jeff was my lawyer. The day I was found guilty of killing you, Jeff came to my cell. I asked him the same question. Jimmy? Jimmy, I feel awful. I'm... I'm terribly sorry, but we didn't have a chance. There was... There was nothing I could do. Who killed him, Jeff? Who was it? Why was he killed? You don't remember anything still about that night? I've told you over and over, Jeff. I told it all on the witness stand. We tried. We said you blacked out. Don't you remember? They, they, they didn't believe us. You did your best. But there's a reason for all this. There's got to be. If I did shoot Slade, why don't I remember? I think the, the jury suspected you were jealous of Slade. All that talk about Martha and Slade, it wasn't true. Not Slade. He, he would never have come between Martha and me. Never. It would have helped if we could have gotten her to the stand. Couldn't those 12 good men and true get it through their heads that she's still in shock? In a hospital? The doctor said she might endanger her life if we had her testify. Couldn't they understand that? Well, sure, Jimmy. They believe she was ill from the shock. But what brought that shock about is what turned the verdict against you. Stupid, stupid fools. If only you could remember, Jeff. Jeff, I swear to you, as I did the first day you undertook to defend me, I do not remember. Sure, 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 I believe that. Well, I'm uh, I'm getting up an appeal. That'll help gain us time. And uh, by the time the case is heard again, Martha will have recovered enough to testify. Poor girl, what I've brought on her head. She's our only hope. If Martha tells what she knows, she might save you. You mean save my life? Oh, no, 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 no. The death penalty doesn't exist in this state. But the judge could hang 20 to 30 years around your neck. Good Lord, Jeff, I'll be an old man by then. All right, Jimmy, I'm going now. And as soon as Martha's well enough, I'll go see her. Pray every day, too. <laughs> Everything helps. Martha? Martha, it's me, Jeff Conroy. <laughs> How's it going? Oh, hello, Jeff. Pretty well, I guess. When are they going to let me get out of bed? Oh, I talked to the doctors and they said in a week or two. Isn't that good news? I, I don't understand, Jeff. Where is everybody? <laughs> I'm the first person who's been allowed to see you. And I sure had to pull a lot of strings to do it. Well, where's Jimmy? Has he been to see me? Don't you know? Well, it, it's all been such a whirl in my head. I, I, I don't even know why I'm in the hospital. Nobody tells you anything here. Oh, well, you, you, you suffered a shock. Oh, what kind of a shock? Why isn't Jimmy here? He'd be here if he could. He, 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 Martha, the reason I'm here, and I'm here not only as a friend, but... Uh, I, I want to know how long I, I've been in this place. What did I do? What do you mean, shock? Hey, hey, hold on, Martha. One question at a time, huh? I want you to try to remember. Look, Jeff, what... stop playing with me. How long have I been here? Four weeks. I, I've been in the hospital for four weeks. Well, you were sort of in a coma, and then you were delirious. And the doctors thought it advisable to remain quiet until you got better. Four weeks? Martha, this is very important. I'm talking to you not only as an old friend, but, but as Jimmy's lawyer. Lawyer? Do you remember that night at, at Crow's Nest that you and Slade Brown had been out backpacking and you came home around dinner time? Slade? Yes. Oh, yes, I, th I think so. <laughs> J Jimmy had shot his own toe off or something equally stupid and he was laid up all week, I think. He, he, he couldn't make the day trips with Slade and me. Do you remember what happened when you and Slade came back? Came back? When? We went out each day on different trails. You know, sometimes to Mount Baldy, sometimes to the Clay Pass. Which day? 
Why? Well, on this day, Slade and Jimmy had a fight about something. They did? Well, Jimmy was cleaning one of his guns in the trophy room. Do you remember now? It was a quarrel. Oh, why don't you ask Slade? May maybe he remembers. You don't recall having been in the trophy room with Slade Brown and your husband and a gun going off. What? What happened, Martha? What happened? A gun? Whose gun? Oh, why don't you ask Slade? I don't know what you're talking about. I can't ask Slade. He's dead. Oh, no. Martha, try to remember, please. Uh, yes. Yes, that... That time we'd... Yes. Slade and Jimmy. I, I brought them drinks. They were angry. They were both very angry. Jimmy, he... He said things. And, and, and then? I, I, I don't know. You mean you don't remember anymore? Slade is dead. Oh, for heaven's sake, Martha. Jimmy's been found guilty of killing him. I, uh, I have an appeal in the works, but I need a witness. You, you're the only one who can save him. I wish I were dreaming all this. Won't you please, please try to tell me? I can't tell you anything, Jeff. I wasn't there. You left the room? I walked out of the trophy room, and they stayed in there. What they said and what they did, I don't know. And after that, I remember absolutely nothing. You're sure now? You're sure? You you, you don't remember the police arriving or, or, or anything? What police? No, no, I, I don't remember any of that. Just waking up and being here. So you were not in the room... You saw nothing, and you heard nothing. All I know is I wasn't in that room. Okay. I guess that's what I'll have to tell Jimmy. If Martha says she wasn't in the trophy room, that's the truth, Jeff. I've never known her to lie. Yes? <laughs> Who knows? Why do you say, who knows? Look, Jimmy, I'll tell you why. After years of practicing law, you develop a, a, an instinct when a person is telling the truth and when he isn't. In your case, I'll be honest with you, I do believe your mind went blank. I do believe you don't remember what happened that night. Unfortunately, all the evidence of fingerprints in your rifle where Slade's body fell, the bullet they dug out of the wall, all of this is irrefutable. But you still, and I honestly believe this, are telling me the truth. But in the hospital yesterday when I talked to Martha, Jimmy, I didn't believe her. I sensed she knew something she wasn't about to tell me. Does she know now that I've been sentenced for murder, that I'm here in prison? She didn't know, but I, I told her. Does she know Slade is dead? Yes. And Jimmy, believe me, the... The way she took that, it was strange, very strange. I, I can't say anymore. No, say it. Go ahead, say it. Jimmy, I know you love Martha, but what came across to me was, was that of the two men who were in your trophy room together... I know what you're going to say, Jeff. That she was heartbroken, Slade was killed. Well, why shouldn't she be? No, 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 it was more than that, Jimmy. I had the strong impression that her sorrow was because... Because the wrong man had died. What so many of our tales of mystery boil down to is who is telling the truth? One has to weigh that question against who has got the most to lose or the most to gain by lying. Hayward James Burns has already paid society's price. What he has to gain now is peace of mind. And what of his wife of 30 years ago? Where is she now? We will undoubtedly have all the answers when I return shortly with Act 3. This is WBBM Chicago News Radio 78. 72 degrees at Midway, four minutes after 11 o'clock. Muhammad Ali has regained his world championship boxing crown. Is it possible for a man to will the past to life? To force himself to remember the forgotten? Thirty years ago, in a mountain lodge high in the California hills, 
A man was shot to death. Another man was accused, sentenced, and served time for a crime he cannot remember committing. Now, alone in the very room where death took place, he agonizes over that blank in his memory. Slade! Slade, come back to me! Make me remember what happened! Mr. Burns! Mr. Burns! Mr. Burns, are you all right? Go away! Go away! I'm fine! I'm all right! It's three o'clock in the morning, Mr. Burns. Who can sleep with such goings on? What are you saying? It's three o'clock in the morning. I permitted you to remain in that room on condition you'd be quiet and not make a fuss. All this shouting and screaming, it's too much, do you understand, Mr. Burns? It's too much. I'm sorry, Miss Mantle. I'll do my best to keep my voice down. Such a night. They should never have let you come up here. It was a big mistake. I said I'd be quiet. Now, will you please go? Whatever are you doing in that room, that's what I'd like to know. Get out. Get out before I lose my temper. Now go. Slade. I'm standing on the exact spot where I was. I'm looking out the window, and I see you and Martha coming back to the lodge. You're walking slowly, holding hands. Martha's whispering something into your ear. She's pointing to this window. Neither of you can see me. I'm standing behind a curtain, Slade. I want you to come up here to the trophy room. Do you hear me, Slade? Hi, Jim, old buddy. How's the foot? Huh. See you standing up and putting some weight on it. You and Martha have a good time? Found a new trail and deer. Too bad it's not the hunting season. Oh, which way'd you go? Oh, we took the North Fork up by old Boldy. You know, this morning when we left at five, you were still snoozing away. Martha and I want to try the same trail tomorrow if the weather holds out and just keep going a little further. Say, where is that wife of yours? I told her to fix me a drink and come on in. I hate to be laid up like this, miss all those hikes. Oh, that toe ought to heal soon. I mean, I'd like to be sympathetic, old buddy, but it sure was stupid shooting yourself in the foot. Oh, I agree entirely. That jittery old New England hunting rifle. You know, when I'm loading her, I always point her down at the ground. Well, my foot must have slipped on a rock, and away she went. Lucky it was only a toe. Hey, Martha, hurry it up with that drink, huh? You know, Jimmy, old buddy, you sure got a lot of beauties in this gun case. Oh, you like them? Most of these are black powder guns. Now, here's one. Heft that. That's called the Connecticut Valley. (laughs) Actually, it's a spitting image of a Kentucky rifle. And here's one that was used by my great-grandfather when he came over from Kentucky Territory. You know, since I have so much time in my hands, I've been pulling them down and giving them all a cleaning. Hey, maybe I'll come back here for the deer season. I wish you would. You could use this gun. You know, this is so accurate that in the old days, a frontiersman could bring down a squirrel from the top of a tree or drop a deer at a hundred yards with it. Here, look at the lock plate. Just look at that workmanship. Yeah. Go on, heft it. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hello, Martha. Oh, what a perfect day it's been. Oh, sorry you couldn't be with us, Jimmy. Here you are, Slade. Here's your glass. Uh, Thank you. (laughs) Look, I almost spilled it. I don't know what I have to be nervous about. And one for you, too, Jimmy. Where's yours, honey? Oh, I didn't feel much like a drink. Mm, You don't look like you need to pick me up. Your cheeks are all flushed. You look great. Mm, I'm still picking leaves and twigs out of my hair. Slade and I found this little valley on the other side of Old Baldy, completely protected. I don't think a human being's been there since the beginning of time. Well, cheers, Martha. Cheers, Jimmy. Cheers. Well, now that I've brought you boys your drinks, I'm going down to do something about dinner. Slade said he'd like a big, fat steak. That suit you, Jimmy? Anything Slade wants is all right with me. Oh, and I made a chestnut pie for dessert. Hey, no kidding. That's my favorite. See, old pal, you come up here for a week of backpacking and you get the royal treatment. I- I'll call you both as soon as it's on the table. Slade, can I ask you something? Why, well, anything at all, buddy. How come you never got married? Oh, you know why. Must have been other girls. <laughs> I kid you not. When Martha chose you, I knew I'd never find anybody I cared for as much, so I just stopped looking. Did you ever tell Martha that? No, never did. Until this week. 
The day after you were laid up, remember, she was so disappointed to have to take to the trails alone. I said, well, well I'll go along. Mm -hmm. You didn't take much convincing. Well, I came up here to get some outdoor air in my lungs. <laughs> I didn't know you couldn't shoot straight. <laughs> Well, anyway, that first day on the trail, we sort of got talking. And I said, uh, what was it like being married to you for five years? And she said, why? And I said, well, just that uh, I'd never gotten her out of my mind. Slade, I've been doing a lot of thinking this past week. You two going off every day alone? Oh, now come on, old buddy. Wondering if I were you, and you were in my shoes, stuck here... What would I have done? About what? Staking a claim. Oh, now, Jimmy, old buddy, you got me all Don't wrong. Don't old buddy me, old pal. I know just what you two have been up to. Well, you must be crazy. Martha, the way she looks at you. Now, you let your imagination get the best of you. If it makes any difference to you, I'll pack up and go back home to San Francisco tonight. I, I don't want to make any enemies. I'll run for it, hmm? And it isn't really very nice what you're saying about your own wife, either. You ever think of that? Look, I know her. It's taken me five years, but I know her. Jimmy? Jimmy, I can't find the corkscrew for the wine. Jimmy? Hey, what is it with you two? Nothing. We were just talking. Hey, let me have that rifle back, Slade. I'll re return it to the case. Okay. Careful how you hand it to me. Why, is it loaded? Some of them are. I'm not quite sure which ones. Well, let go of it, Slade. Will you give me the gun back? Oh, you coward. Slade, what's the matter? You gun-happy coward. Will you give me that gun? He's been telling me that you and I have been enjoying ourselves up in the forest while he's been here. What do you mean? Sure we have. Well, that's not what he meant, Martha. I told Jimmy what I told you a couple of days ago, the way I've always felt. Oh, Slade, why did you? What was the point of that? Well, Jimmy asked me. Yes, if you want to know I love her, that's the truth. And how do you feel about Slade, Martha? Slade, Slade, please put that gun down. Oh, it's an antique. It's not loaded. Martha, I asked you a question. How do you feel about Slade? Oh, tell her, Martha. I'm not saying anything until that gun is back in the case where it belongs. Okay, old buddy, take the darn thing. All right, now you, Jimmy. All right, I've put it away. Look, we're just friends, like the two of you. Is that the truth? Did I ever lie to you? Ever? No, but maybe it isn't all the truth. Oh, Jimmy. Jimmy, what's the use? You and I know we aren't getting along. We live together, but who are we kidding? Ourselves? You disgust me. Hey, now, wait a minute, That's Jimmy. That's the word, Martha. I think I fell out of love with you, Jimmy, when I found out that without guns and hunting and all this campfire kind of a life, you weren't much of anybody. You made me believe you liked it. I had to make myself believe that. So do you. I'm nobody. I'm sorry, Jimmy. I didn't realize it myself until I saw Slade again. I knew it. I, I don't want to hurt you. And I don't really think it'll take you very long to get over losing me. You've got too much pride. Anyway, look, let, let's behave ourselves. We're up here, the three of us are alone. I, I'm sure we can all act in, in a civilized way. Now, I'll have dinner ready in half an hour. I'll, uh, I'll get that bottle of wine open somehow. Well, she's a sensible girl. Jimmy? Jimmy, old buddy. Jimmy, what are you... Miss Conroy? Yeah, I'm, I'm Jeffrey Conroy. I came as soon as I got your call. You know, Mr. James Burns? Well, I'm his lawyer. He... He was just, uh, paroled from prison. Yes, I know. I'm Sheriff Clark, County Homicide. That's some hall up this mountain. What is it with Mr. Burns? Is, is he up here at Crow's Nest? I'm afraid we have some sad news. Mr. Burns was found yesterday in one of these rooms here. Dead, sir. De oh, that's awful. Well, he's been in prison for 30 years, and a few days after he gets out, he's... He's dead? How'd he die, Sheriff? That's yeah, heart failure, according to the coroner. Heart failure. Well, at least he made it up here. 
Pete's Lodge was the only home he ever had. Yes, we've been checking our files about this place since there's a murder here about 30 years ago. Yes, that's right. Jimmy's best friend was shot here. Uh, I brought uh, some old file photographs with me. They're in the room where we found the body. If you'll follow me, Mr. Conroy. Oh, sure. Oh, how I know this place. Jimmy used to keep his guns here, his silver cups and trophies. He called it his trophy room. Yes, now take a look at this photograph, if you will. This was taken 30 years ago of a bullet hole above that mantelpiece. Where did they find Jimmy's body? Right there on the floor, in front of the fireplace. Now just take a look at this photograph here. Is it a bullet hole? No, I don't have to. I was right here 30 years ago. I don't have to look at your file photo. The hole is right there in the middle of that panel. And just take a closer look, Miss Conroy. What? My Lord. Is that a... Yes. A second bullet hole. The same size. Right next to it. That's why we wanted you to come up here. Now, is this old photograph accurate? Was there only one bullet hole at that time? Why, I don't understand the second one at all. It, it looks new. Yeah, neither do we. There's no rifle, no gun of any kind found on premises. House is absolutely empty. Dust three inches deep in the hall, in the rooms, and only one set of footprints on the outside all the way to this room. Here with Mr. Burns. Sheriff... What do you make of it? Well, there is something else. We made inquiries down in Trudeau. We learned that Mr. Burns' wife was living in some rented rooms and had been there for years under an assumed name. She called herself Miss Mantle. Martha. I lost track of her so long ago. She, she just disappeared. I, uh... I better get back to town and break the news to her. I'm afraid it's too late for that, sir. Last night, we went along to where she was staying. She was dead. She's dead? Yes. A seizure. Also hot. That's uncanny. Well, that's not the half of it, sir. What's most peculiar of all... The coroner ascertained the exact hour at which Mr. Burns died up here. Mrs. Burns, down there in town, apparently died at exactly the same time. Crow's Nest still stands on a mountaintop on the California coast. The lodge is still empty, except for the secret it contains... We have come as close to discovering it as anyone. But even we don't know the whole story. How many of the old mansions and deserted dwellings in your neighborhood have hidden lives? More than you'd think. I'll be back shortly. Back to our old friend Chris Marlowe, who reminds us... It lies not in our power to love or hate. For will in us is overruled by fate. Chris's old drinking companion, Will Shakespeare, saw fate a little differently. The fault, he said, lies not in our stars, but in ourselves. Somewhere between ourselves and our fates probably lies the truth. Our cast included Mandel Kramer, Carol Titel, and Ian Martin. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. Oh, come on. All I'm saying is, there could be a secret room. All right. And inside is a lady that's playing the piano. Well, that ain't too far off. Old J.J. Cartwright, he had a daughter. She was going to be a piano player. Uh-huh. She was going to give concerts. But in them days, you, you didn't have this uh, women's lib. So ladies didn't do things in public, you know what I mean? You're off again. You should have been a writer. Anyhow, you go. Th this, this daughter of his, she, she was murdered. Yeah? By who? Well, they don't know by who. She was found murdered in the room. 
They figure maybe some prowler did it. I figure something else. Maybe it was a boyfriend. It don't matter now, does it? I'm only bringing the whole thing up to prove that there could have been a secret room. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.